Our names are Mike and Heather, and we've spent the last year and a half traveling out of our 2013 Ford Transit Connect micro camper van. Today we're going to talk about our honest thoughts of the van as a vehicle, as well as how it has worked as a camper van while we visited all 50 states. Throughout this video, we're going to be talking a lot about things that we like about this van because we do absolutely love our van, but we're also going to be talking about some things that aren't the best about this van. If we're being honest, the Ford Transit Connect wasn't the first van that we were wanting to convert out. We started off with those really cool Westies, which I think is kind of everybody's inspiration for van life. Worked our way up to the bigger vans like Sprinters, Ram Promasters. Quickly learned that that was way, way out of our budget. So we stumbled upon the micro camper vans like the Ford Transit Connects here, and we couldn't be happier with our decision. One of the great things about the Ford Transit Connect is the cost to get into, and if you're building it out to be a camper van, the cost to actually do the build. Because it's a smaller vehicle, it ends up being a lot cheaper than some of the more traditional camper vans. And because you have less cargo space that you have to fill and build out, the materials are way cheaper. So for us, it was really great because we were able to get in with a smaller budget, build it out the way that we wanted to with things fitting our needs without breaking the bank. There are a few different companies that make vans this size. Ram has one, Nissan has one, but we were drawn to the Ford Transit Connect because of the ceiling height. It's important to note that from 2010 to 2013 on those models, the ceiling height in the cargo space is much higher than the newer ones. So we knew that we were going to be looking for a van in those years. That drew us to the 2013. It was the newest of those because I'm about six foot five. We knew that we needed as much headroom wherever we could get it. So we went with this year. This van is great as far as the size goes because you get fantastic gas mileage. It drives like a car, so it's not like a big bulky <laughs> RV. The drivability is something that is definitely really high on the list of pros for this vehicle. If you're someone who hasn't ever driven a big vehicle and are a little bit hesitant to get behind the wheel of a Ford Transit or a ProMaster or a Sprinter van, this drives basically like a taller Ford Focus. It really is easy to get behind the wheel and go. You can park it in normal parking spots. You can drive it down scenic roads that have limitations of vehicles over 22 feet. You get charged car prices because it's not that much bigger than a car. So if you're in the ferry, going on tunnels, tunnels yep. anything like that, because it's a smaller vehicle, you don't get charged a van or a larger vehicle size. Even in campsites, if you're going to pay for a campsite, you can stay in the smaller one, which is significantly cheaper than the larger paved ones that are needed for bigger RVs. I did also drive this vehicle to my job before I transferred to remote. So this was my daily commuter car for about a month while I was trying to find a remote job to make this lifestyle full time. So size is going to be really the biggest consideration when it comes to this van because it is a micro camper van. So with the good, you are going to get some bad. It's about four foot by six foot space in the back. Yeah. So you do have to be quite selective when you're building it out about the type of amenities that you're gonna have. Because of the size of our van, we don't have a stationary bathroom. We don't have a stationary shower inside the van. So those are some of the things that we just couldn't put in this van. The building out becomes more difficult because you're shrinking everything down. So you would think that it would be easier, but a lot of times if you're building out a stock van or like a box truck, for example, you can go into the store and everything squared off in the right size for that. But when you're building out something this size, you kind of have to customize everything that you're building out and there's a lot less amenities and things that you can actually put in the back. When we designed the bed, we knew that I needed to be able to push my seat back all the way to be able to sit comfortably and drive. So that affected our ability to have bench come past this. Yeah, for me being 6'5", we had to build an extension, so it's not something that I would naturally be able to lay out straight in. Additionally, the way the van is set up with just the sizing of it, we do crawl from the front to the back at the end of the day if we aren't getting out and going around, say we're in a, a Walmart parking lot. So there are things that can be a little annoying or yeah. tedious. So it really depends on the type of travel that you're wanting to do. We have this analogy for different vans compared to different housing situations that you might be doing on a vacation. So our type of van and vans these size, we like to compare to being a tent on wheels. It has everything you need and that's it. You get your bed, <laughs> uh, some storage space. Yeah, you get your creature comforts where yeah. you can bring your, your own shelter. things with you. Yes. Yeah. And then the Sprinter vans, Ram Pro Masters, that next level up would be like a cabin. You have a bathroom, you might have a shower, you have a little bit extra space. And then the RVs are hotel rooms, like luxury at its finest. Yeah. If you've gone camping and love tent camping, this is the type of van for you. If you're somebody who needs a little bit more amenities, 
go with a larger van. And if you're somebody who's like, I only stay in hotels, but I want to dabble in this lifestyle, stick to the RVs. Just to demonstrate the process of going from the front to the back, we're now going to do that. So it is possible, but you kind of have to be a little bit flexible. As you can see from the back here, we have created a comfortable living space. We have a bench that converts into a bed. We have a cabinet that can double as a desk or dining area. So we were able to effectively utilize the space back here to make a comfortable living space. But you have to understand that this is all the space you get. And if you're trying to stand, for me, this is bent in half to to be in this space. So that does affect yeah. a little bit of how you travel. And for reference, Mike is about 6'5", so if you're more normal height, <laughs> not that you're not normal, but if you're like 5'6", which is what I am, you, you still get like a, a couple inches here and oh, there. Yeah. It's definitely a comfortable space. It's just not one that you want to spend a lot of time in, but that's exactly the type of travel that we were going for. We wanted to spend a lot of time out of the van. So this is definitely a, the perfect road trip vehicle or like weekender. So you're moving kind of like fast pace and you're not really spending a lot of time in the van. You're out exploring, you're building campfires at night, you're eating at the picnic tables. The space in the back needed to be comfortable to close the day out more so than spending tons of time back here. We did work remotely on the road, and so that was something that we had in mind. But in terms of just lounging and relaxing back here, we didn't really do as much of that. If you are working remotely or thinking about working remotely and wondering if this type of van could fit that lifestyle, it absolutely can. We have a little slide out desk that we would type in and work off of. Honestly, most of the time I sat back here and Mike would sit up in the front and kind of like spread out his legs across the two seats and work on his laptop. So there's space to be able to work even with two people. It does get a little bit difficult if somebody's like on a call or like has a training that they have to listen to. I mean, we always put in headphones, but more so that you have to be quiet while the other person's doing something. So that could be a little bit of a timing issue. But if you're thinking about working remotely, you can definitely make this fan work. And I will say a lot of the size issues back here could easily be solved if you're a solo traveler. You can definitely do it as a couple and I wouldn't trade the experience of doing this for anything, but I will say that it would be a lot more comfortable back here if it was just a solo traveler mm -hmm. kit out. That being said, you can definitely do it as a couple. There were times where you really did feel the size. So if we were stuck inside on a rainy day in an area and we had to spend the whole day in the van. It wasn't the worst thing, but we would get cabin fever if it was more than a day or two of just being in the van because it is such a small area. And that being said, there's no place to put wet things. So we have a couple hooks over our door to be able to like hang things off of, but for the most part, if you get stuff wet, there's really no place to put it in this van. And I think that kind of leads us into another point is this van does incredibly well for three seasons and then it works for the fourth. So spring, summer, and fall, it does amazing. We're able to travel and stay comfortable. We have a max air fan that keeps the, the air circulating. So as long as you're not in extremely hot climates, you're really able to be comfortable during the summer, during the fall, during the spring with those kinds of amenities. Winter gets difficult because like Heather said, there's nowhere for things to dry. Or put your big bulky boots, your big bulky yeah. coat. It's definitely possible to do and we've traveled during the winter in this you're able to if you built it out right and have some of the the different things we've stayed as cold as three degrees fahrenheit and we've been in the van as hot as 97 degrees overnight neither one of them are fantastic but again it's possible to make it work although there are sort of issues doing the van life side of winter in a Ford Transit Connect. The actual driving of it is really good. Make sure that you have snow tires on any vehicle when you're driving in winter weather conditions, but because it's a front wheel drive, we never had issues driving through the snow and we've driven through multiple blizzard conditions without losing traction or having issues getting up hills or anything like that. So this is a vehicle that you can be comfortable driving in all conditions. You may just find the living out of them a little bit more difficult. On that note, I would say that we have driven this van in every conceivable condition and every type of environment. We've driven into the mountains on the west side of the country. We've driven it all the way up to Alaska down dirt roads. I will say this van is not the fastest <laughs> and it is not the best at getting up hills, but we've never been- It gets been, up them, just it, very slow. Yeah, we've never not gotten up a hill. We've actually driven this to the top of Pikes Peak and back down again with no issues, but 
it's going to take a little bit of time because it's not the most powerful engine. You might get passed by a few cars, but you know what? That just forces you to take it all in a little bit longer on the scenic drives. Yeah. A question that we get frequently about our van is, have you had any mechanical issues? I think when people are researching this type of van, they see that transmission issues may be a mm -hmm. common problem, which is something that we also had a concern about before buying our van. But we can honestly say, knock on wood, which is our favorite <laughs> thing to do because I feel like we're always about to jinx ourselves. We haven't had any issues with the transmission, any major issues at all. We've had three things besides flat tires that have gone wrong on the road. The first being in Ohio when we had a coolant leak, which was kind of like a freak accident. We had um, brought it into the shop after it happened and the mechanic had told us if you would have brought this in last week, we wouldn't have seen anything that would have made us say change the coolant line or anything like that because it just was a weird freak occurrence that just sort of unfortunately happened. Mm -hmm. The second thing was an O2 sensor, but that's just from doing a really large amount of driving and that's more of a routine maintenance thing. And after we got the O2 sensor fixed, all the issues went away that were associated with that. The third thing is that we had to fix a wheel bearing, which is, again, it's kind of like a routine maintenance when your van gets up there. Our van is currently at 150,000 miles and we purchased it at 97,000. So we've definitely put a lot of miles on this thing and it was getting to that point where we needed to replace the wheel bearing. We also replaced the brakes because we got it inspected and they said they were getting a little low, but other than that, we've had no real issues with anything dealing with the van. With our van, we're the second owner. Mm -hmm. It had had routine maintenance and we've kept that up, making yes. sure we do oil changes. Coolant line, yep. flushing, but I don't know what they do. But it's, yeah. it's a lot of money, that's all I know. Yeah, we make sure that we do take care of the van. So because it's high miles, we do the, I guess it ends up being the most expensive oil change, but high miles synthetic. Really, I think with a vehicle like this and any camper mm -hmm. van that you're going to be putting a lot of miles on and investing in building out, you are going to want to take care of the regular maintenance. Maintenance on a vehicle like this compared to some of the larger ones, we have gotten away with a lot cheaper prices. Any of the different things we've had to fix have always been less expensive. Buying tires is way less expensive than if you had a bigger vehicle. We actually have two sets of tires and a full-size spare that we were able to get for this without breaking the bank the way that you would on a large truck vehicles. or a large van. The final thing to say about a good thing with the Ford Transit Connect is it is becoming a more and more popular camper van option because mm -hmm. of all of the things we said. And in spite of some of the drawbacks, there are more positives, especially if you're willing to make the sacrifices in some areas. But with that said, there are a lot of builds online so you can find inspiration. You can find guides on how to do things like an overhead shelf on building a bed in the back of these, which was really great for us because we didn't have any carpentry or construction experience. So we're able to look at a lot of different examples on YouTube to get a sense of what works in here and what doesn't. So that was really helpful. And I don't know if that would be the case with some of the different van models, especially in this size range. So the big question is, would we buy this van again? And would we travel the country in this type of van again? For me personally, absolutely. The biggest positive about this van is that it allowed us to get into van life. Van life and getting into it can be quite expensive. And this was our option to be able to do that. Any other van we honestly couldn't afford to do this type of lifestyle. So this is a perfect starter van or the perfect low maintenance van if you're just wanting to like do this lifestyle and don't wanna to have to worry about a very intricate electrical system or your pipes bursting on your sink or figuring out how to dump your composting toilet. If you just care about the traveling and you want a place to sleep for the night to get from A and B, this is it and I would absolutely do it again in this type of van. For me, if I were asked, is this van worth it? I would say it depends because you do have to make some concessions. In mine and Heather's case, I could not imagine any other way to have visited all 50 states. This was the perfect option for us because we did want to move more quickly mm -hmm. and just needed a place to sleep for the night. And yeah, it allowed us to get into van life to do maybe the most amazing adventure that we've ever done in our lives. And one of the things that has made us the happiest that we've ever been was being on the road and seeing new places. We were able to go and see anything that we wanted to with no restrictions. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we would have ever been able to do it any differently. So for us, I would absolutely do this again. But I will say it depends on how you're wanting to travel because mm -hmm. you do have to want a specific type of travel to make this work and be comfortable for months at a time. We were out for 
six to eight months on the road every day living in in this vehicle and there are times where it feels small but the reward is being able to drive to the top of Pikes Peak and look out or drive that back road in the national park to get a view of a wild moose or something like that, which are all things that we're able to do. You can really make this type of lifestyle work with any type of vehicle. People are doing this in cars, Priuses, trucks. You can make this work with anything. The so, most important thing is get out there. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any questions about anything we talked about here or different aspects of the van that we didn't cover in this video, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We absolutely love our van and hope you do too. I'm living my best life. I wake up with the sunrise. It does not look a thing like I thought that. Baby